Welcome back to Tech Manitoba's series on basic computer use. I'm happy you've joined us again, and I look forward to guiding you through another episode. You can see why this is called a desktop computer. It's meant to be used in one place and stay on the desktop. A laptop computer, on the other hand, is light and portable, and it can be used on your lap or wherever you need. If you're using a laptop computer, this episode will be good information for you, but some things will be different. We'll focus on laptops, tablets, and smartphones in future episodes. In our first video, we went through all the parts of the computer and how they all connected together. Now we're ready to start everything up. So just to be sure we're using the same terms and know all the parts, let's look at using the mouse properly. Take a look at it. The mouse should be on the right side of the keyboard for right-handed people. You will notice that there are two buttons on the mouse and a roller called the scroll wheel in the center. Your pointer finger is used for the left click and your second finger is used for what we call a right click. Your second finger is also used on the scroll wheel. That lets you move up and down through a document or a website more quickly. Your thumb grasps the left side and your ring finger grasps the right side. Some people describe the pressure that you would place on a mouse as the same pressure you'd use if you were holding a live mouse. You want to hold it firmly, but not squish it. While holding the mouse flat on the desk, move it around from side to side and up and down. You should see a small arrow called a pointer moving around the screen. The movement of the pointer should match the movements of the mouse. Just a tip about the mouse. Make sure the surface you're using it on is clean and smooth. Some people use a mouse pad, and if you don't have one, you could use a, a newspaper or a pad of paper. It just makes your mouse work more efficiently. The light underneath the mouse is bounced off the desk and back to a sensor in the mouse. That light is a weak laser and it's not dangerous. I'll be referring to clicking and double clicking throughout the tutorials. A click is a single push and release of the mouse button. A double click is two consecutive quick push and release motions. You may hear a click of the plastic, which is where the name comes from. A right click refers to clicking the right side of the mouse. Put some pressure on the thumb and the ring finger to hold the mouse still while you're clicking. One left click is telling the computer where you want its attention. It's like pointing to the screen with your actual finger. If you want to open up a program or a file, you move the pointer to the place on this screen where you want the action to happen and you double click to open it or to make a program run. When you right click on something, it gives you a list of options that are available to you. So just remember, even if you click on something that you didn't want to open, it's very easy to undo that action. You cannot break the computer, you can't click on anything that's wrong. It's okay to make mistakes and it's very easy to fix it. Let's take a look at your screen. This is a desktop. If you're seeing the words sign in, please click with the left mouse button to get to the blue background screen. So now, what are we looking at? Just like we have a real physical desktop to work on where we would have our uh, pens, our calendar, maybe a picture of our family, um, maybe we're now looking at the same thing but we're looking at it in a virtual desktop on the monitor. It's referred to as Microsoft Windows or simply Windows. The computer needs a way to communicate and organize information and software, pictures, video and games and it does that through what's called the Windows operating system. This computer is running Windows version 10. So let's do some physical adjustments before we look into Windows. There are six black buttons on your monitor and they each do something. The first one I'd like you to push is the fifth from the right. It says auto underneath it. This will automatically adjust your desktop to the best brightness and best placement. If you find that you'd like your screen brighter or dimmer for your eyes, you can do that just like on a TV. The third button from the right has a picture of a sun below it. This is for brightness adjustment. Above that button is an up arrow. So if you want it brighter, just keep hitting the button. If you want it dimmer, look for the button to the left of it. It shows a down arrow above it. By pushing this, you'll decrease the brightness. Once you like the screen brightness, simply stop or select the second button from the right. It has an OK above it. The pictures you see on the left side of the screen are referred to as icons. These are images that represent actions or programs that you can open. We'll look at these more in depth in later tutorials. Along the bottom of your screen is a black bar called the taskbar. 
The taskbar allows you to launch a program or see any file that's open. Look to the far right on the taskbar and you'll see the time and the date. This is just like having a calendar and a clock on your desk. Move your mouse to make the pointer appear to hover over the date and let it rest there. You now see the date written a longer version along with the day. Now let's practice our clicking. Hold your mouse still while it's on the date and give it one click. You should see a complete calendar for the month and a running clock. If it doesn't open, move the mouse away and try it again. To close this, simply click anywhere on the screen in the blue-green area. Items on the taskbar only need one click to open them. All other icons on the screen or in Windows need two clicks to open them. When you're first getting used to the movement of a mouse, you sometimes feel like you've run out of space to make a selection. If this happens, simply pick up the mouse, place it down again. Let's open the calendar again. You'll notice two arrows to the right of June 2020. Let's click on the up arrow and see what it does. It takes us to May 2020. Now try clicking the down arrow a few times and you can see that it takes you further into the year. Now click away from the calendar on the blue-green space of the screen to close the calendar. Reopen it and we're back at June 2020. Let's keep practicing. To the left of the calendar, you see capital E, capital N, capital G. Just move your pointer over the letters. A box will pop up with an explanation of what this ENG does. This is called a tooltip. Always get in the habit of reading these tips to learn more about your computer. It shows us that we have a choice of English, US, United States, or Canadian. Let's click on the Canadian keyboard. Remember this when we look at the keyboard in later episodes. Move your mouse now to rest on the pointer of the image of a speaker to the left of the ENG. This tells you that this is a speaker. Click on it to open it. Mine shows that my speakers are only at 45%. I would like them much louder. What you're seeing is called a sliding scale. I'm going to place my pointer on the blue vertical bar and you'll notice it changes color to white. I'm going to click down on my left mouse button, hold it down, don't let go. This is a different action from just a single click. While holding the left button down, drag the bar over to the right to 100% and then let go of the left button. Try this a few times to get the hang of it. Notice if I drag to the far left, the speaker is now off and it shows a small X beside the image. If I click on the blue-green window area, I close this window. Look at the taskbar. Rest your mouse on the speaker image and the tooltip tells me that the speaker is muted, it is off. To the left of the speaker is a world image. Rest your pointer over it. The tooltip says, not connected. No connections are available. This is where you see if you are connected to the internet. We're not connected yet, but we'll look at that in the next tutorial. To the right of the world image is an up arrow. If I click on it, it has three more images. They aren't important to us just now, but just know that if you're curious and you should happen to double click on something and open it, there is no harm done. Let me show you. I will open the Windows security by double clicking. It opens up what's called a window. Each window will look different and perform a different task, but each window has something in common, an X in the top right corner. When you move your pointer onto it, the tooltip lets you know that it is to close the window. Simply give it one click to close the window. Easy. So let's shut off our computer and end here. To the bottom left of your screen, you should find the icon known as the Windows icon. It looks like a four-paned window. The tooltip says start. Click it once and you'll get to see the start menu. The button directly above it is a circle with a bar at the top. Hover your pointer over it and you'll see the power option. Let's look at our options. Restart will shut down your computer and start it back up again. This could be helpful if your computer has stopped working and needs to be refreshed. Sleep will put your computer in a mode where it will be quiet and rest, but it's still on and it's waiting. And shutdown does exactly what it says. This will close all the running programs and power down your computer. You'll know it's off when the lights are out on your CPU and the CPU fan is quiet. Why don't you shut down for practice and then turn your computer back on when you're ready for another lesson. Join us again soon for the next video in our series where we'll look at inputting information and using the keyboard.